Hello everyone, welcome back to Parkitect and welcome back to campaign mode. In this one we are going to be tackling Biscayne Beach. A bustling beach city provides a strip of land for the development of a theme park under the condition that all rides have to be free. That's going to be our problem with this one. The winters can be rainy but otherwise you can expect perfect beach weather. Have an experiences rating of 80%, have at least 600 guests in your park. The optional goals are to have a cleanliness rating of 75% and complete by end of December year 2. So I have been putting this one off for a while uh, because one, it was my least favourite to play through when I had a go before a few years back and two, I just don't know what to do uh, theme wise or anything like that for this one. So let's just get into it and I will force myself to build something. <laughs> Okay, welcome to the Biscayne Beach map. As you can see, I've put the price up to £10. Um, it's going to have to go a lot higher than that once we start getting rides in and stuff. Because in this one, we can't charge for the rides. So, we'll be charging for the entrance fee and for the shops. And, yeah, that's the only way that we can make money. We start off with 22000 so it's not too bad. Um, and we've got this long stretch of land here and this piece that we can uh, buy as well later on if we need to there's some really nice sort of tropical beachy buildings behind here that almost give me sort of California vibes I'm not sure why but yeah, I mean, it's difficult to do a different theme to everyone else for this one because it is just a beachside amusement park, really, isn't it? But I think we'll be plonking rides down first um, and trying to meet the goals before worrying too much about the theming. And then we'll get more into that later on. Um, so let's see what rides we've got. We've got the Carousel, Ferris Wheel, Spiral Sliding Teacups. Good selection of flat rides. Ooh! wasn't expecting that, I'm sure that's a DLC one. Um, the Clockwork, Swinging Ship and Twister. Probably won't build the Clockwork though, I don't know. I'm not sure, it, may, it feels a bit too modern for a park like this. Um, and we've got Junior Mini and Wooden Coaster. So I think the research is going to want to be on coasters. Just to get to 250 on. Um, but we can't spend too much money on um, on research either. Uh, we've got a log flume as well, which might fit nicely into this map. So I think I'm just going to start building. Um, probably start with a wooden coaster and take it from there, really. So I'll see you all in the first time lapse. So we're going to start focusing on the gameplay first and try and meet the park goals because I think they're going to be rather difficult for this one as I've mentioned already um, so I'm going to start off just putting a out and back wooden coaster in pretty standard layout in fact this layout is kind of inspired by the roller coaster at Great Yarmouth Pleasure Beach um, yeah that's what it's named I think it might have been called the um, scenic railway or something before as well but yes yeah, it's, it's called the roller coaster now it's got a big blue structure around it so we might try and recreate something sort of inspired by that later on um, but I was also thinking maybe we could have a pirate themed area of this park as well not heavily detailed or themed but sort of loosely themed like a sort of beachside amusement park might do uh, so that's just some ideas that I had for this and um, really yeah it's you have to start with this coaster because it's the only thrill coaster they give you um, to begin with in the game and um, it's that layout's quite nostalgic to me as well because I used to ride that coaster when I was a kid um, next thing we're doing then is building a little entrance plaza type thing with a carousel in the middle so we can start sort of designing the layout of this park and I pop down another flat ride as well got the teacups there and just giving a little bit of space behind it so we can put some shops and stalls in as well and think about everything like that because the shops I think are going to be quite important in this one as well as we can't charge for entrance fee we're going to want to um, make as much money as possible from the food and drink and souvenirs and stuff like that so we can charge a little bit more 
than we normally would and hopefully the guests will be happy to pay for that. Um, I do sort of loosely theme some of these buildings up, we put a staff room in there as well and a bathroom. Um, I wanted to get some sort of idea of what I can do with this theme and try and make it semi original and creative even though it's probably pretty similar to what the people have already done before but yeah I've, I kind of like the way that building looks it's very simple very basic and um, looks like it could fit nicely in a beachfront uh, amusement park like this so yeah that's something to um, something that I can go back and work on later and although you sort of see this as one seamless uh, time lapse it really isn't um, I had to go back to many previous auto saves um, I probably went back about 10 to 15 times into different saves to try and salvage something from the uh, disaster that was the meeting the goals of this campaign I found it really difficult to be honest it's probably the most difficult one so far um, mainly well sort of because you can't charge entrance fee but I suppose I didn't really have a problem that much money wise it was mainly just getting the guest count in in time obviously because I'm going for these optional goals as well and pushing myself that little bit further um, yeah it's they don't give you a very long deadline but I guess that's all part of the challenge so you can see I'm putting a bit more path work in doing some rounded paths making a bit of a plaza in the middle there and sticking some fountains in as well we're keeping it very simple with the theming as well there while I've been rambling I've also put a twister ride in um, just sticking to all the sort of standard rides really a helter skelter always goes down well at the beach I think that looks pretty nice and there I'm putting in the pirate ship which I think will um, go nicely in a pirate sort of themed area along with the wooden coaster there so that all works out quite nicely and um, it's sort of about this point that I saved it and gave this as a point for myself to go back to every time that I kept failing um, so I researched the top spin then and plonked that down. My other main problem was the coasters that you research in this map are absolute guff. You don't get any decent thrill coasters um, for a long time. Eventually you unlock the steel coaster which you can make an intense layout with. Uh, which isn't really what I wanted but yeah you get loads of stuff like the powered coaster. Uh, which is horrible for this campaign map because it's you need quite a big space for it and it's low frill anyway and it's just not a good coaster to build in the game in my opinion um, so I went with the wild mouse which would probably fit quite well into this park didn't really want to build it but I just felt that a standard wild mouse would probably help add to the coaster count and bring the numbers into the park a bit more as well um, so it's quite a lot of fiddling about with the layout and um, eventually I just came up with something that looked fairly standard I think I started the whole thing again a couple of times because I'd sort of run out of space and that's a another major problem with this map the amount of space they give you I know you can unlock more down the other end but that doesn't really help for guest flow to start with if that makes sense um, you really want to get everything into this space that they've given you so I think as well I don't know if you see me do that but I think I pushed the wooden coaster and the pirate ship further back down the park to give us a little bit more room to work with here um, because we also need to cram another coaster in here as well and I suppose it's fairly believable for an amusement park like this that they would cram all the rides together um, if you look at the Blackpool Pleasure Beach it's literally just like an absolute mess of track everywhere um, in the middle which looks kind of cool and I think it's part of the sort of charm of that style of park um, so I started working on the steel coaster 
and initially I thought let's just do a shuttle loop then I looked at the stats and thought that's not going to cut it um, so I'm going to have to build something that sort of resembles one of these shorter like Gershlau coasters um, but obviously with the wrong track type it would have been amazing if I unlocked the what they call the vertical drop coaster in this game which is a Gershlau one that would have been absolutely perfect for what we need but instead I had to do that sort of layout using the steel coaster um, I'm thinking of something like Hero at, um, is that the right ride I'm not sure but I think it's at South End or somewhere like that um, it's just a really like small sort of Gershlau layout that fits into an amusement park like that and then um, yeah that's the sort of thing I went for really just with this one just a um, a launch into a number of inversions and then just like that <laughs> the goals are met and completed and trust me it was nowhere near as easy as I made that look <laughs> in this uh, time lapse I've cut out a lot of stuff that just didn't work um, but now we'll jump over to the live portion and see how the park looks and back to the live portion then and this is how Biscayne Beach looks so far um, I can see this is an issue that I've been facing quite a lot actually the shops go out of stock really quickly and um, we have like six haulers um, I think the problem here is that they have to walk all the way to this depot I mean it's not that far but you know they're just slow and lazy I guess <laughs> Um, here I can't see why it's a problem but this, this, the shops just seem to keep going out of stock so I guess they're really popular with the with the guests the balloons kind of look ridiculous in the colours that I've done them in I've not noticed that before they look fine when the sun's out but obviously they don't need them then um, but yeah th these are the coasters we've got not particularly happy with them at all I'm going to have to change this layout because it looks awful how it goes under this um, bat wing or whatever it is, this cobra roll um, just just had to get something down quickly really to to make to meet the goals um, lack of space as well so it was sort of a factor towards that and I'm not 100% happy with where it is because it goes over into what we want to be the pirate area um, you can see I put a little building down there which is the sort of idea we want to go for that area but yeah we need an overhaul of this layout um, the wild mouse I think is fine it's got a, oh it's got a high intensity now oh, it didn't when I was testing it uh, I guess since riders have been on it it's improved the intensity there um, and I think block brake wise we're pretty good it doesn't stop on any block brakes I have reduced the number of cars on the track and reduce the waiting times and stuff for each vehicle um, but it seems to make it through the layout without stopping until that last block break which is good you know I'm trying to work on improving my um, operations on the rides um, you can see here this plant this sort of entrance plaza area it looks pretty nice obviously we need to do a lot more um, tidying up and polishing it all add a bit more detail in there some plants and stuff will be nice I think but yeah I think the colors and stuff everything looks pretty good here I've sort of gone for a similar color scheme with some of these roofs that I went for in um, one of the previous campaigns I think it's coral caldera but I just think they're quite nice tropical colors for a beachside vibe um, we've got the sort of surface style roof here which I think looks pretty cool we just turn it around it looks quite nice from this side as well uh, yeah so not too much work to do there but a lot of work to do down here and the pathing and the layout is pretty horrible but there's not a lot else I can do really it's it's just due to the sort of nature of the shape of this map it's just one straight path all the way down to the end really um, I don't think we can get any more rides in here but then I don't think we need to because we've met the goals I think the next thing to do would probably be 
I've taken one loan out. I think, to be honest, I'm probably going to close the park, empty it out and open it again. Just to get a big influx of cash and hopefully that will be enough. Um, that will be as much as we need to complete um, all the theming for the park and get this one wrapped up so let's get cracking with it then I'll see you over in the time lapse welcome back to the time lapse then first of all I've got to apologize because I've had a cold this week so I'm gonna sound all bunged up and horrible on the microphone uh, but I just want to get this recording done and get this video out so yeah we're just gonna have to live with it that there shouldn't be colds in May anyway <laughs> it's meant to be summer this shouldn't have happened um, but anyway, um, we get on with the uh, build and filming up the park nicely. As you can see, I completely removed the original steel coaster layout there and started a new one. Um, I've moved the twister so that we've got a little bit more room as well because I felt that a lot of the layout was getting too close to the wooden coaster and what's going to be the pirate area. So, yeah, I decided that we just need to jiggle things around a bit and make the best use of the space that we've got available in this park, the limited space that we've got available. So you can see several attempts I have here of putting a layout in there and I felt it just needs to be pushed down the map a little bit um, to give us the amount of room that we need. And that worked out much nicer with the twister um, being removed there. So I found a way of sort of making everything work and it's just a twisted sort of a mess of um, inversions really. Um, again, quite a short layout. I feel like I've built similar coasters in the last two maps because I did a steel coaster in the harbour one as well. Because um, they don't give you a lot of room in that. So it's a steel launch coaster sort of similar to this where you just try and cram as many sort of inversions and elements in as you can while still making it look realistic to get that high intensity that the guests want to see um, or the guests want to ride rather I'm really happy with how the Cobra roll looks going over the pathway I think that's quite a nice touch and um, yeah I recolored it a little bit darker than how it was before but still this sort of ready pink color and I think that works quite nicely for a beach themed amusement park like this um, and we're going to add very minimal theming to this ride as well. The first theming that I wanted to do then really was to, well not theming as such, but I wanted to get some custom supports in for the coaster uh, because I didn't really like the ones that it had been given. Um, quite a few of them were missing as well because of where the path work was going. So I had to make uh, my own custom supports and I think they look really good actually, they make the coaster look a lot better so I'm really glad that I persevered and did them because to start with I was thinking I'll just sub custom support the bits that haven't been, you know, that aren't supported but then I thought that looks a bit daft so I'll just do the whole thing and we managed to even get rid of the ones that are off the map um, by just placing a palm tree next to the fence that sort of covers over it enough to get rid of those supports so I was really glad that all worked out um, and then you can quickly see me putting in the station for this steel coaster uh, a very very basic station that you'd probably see in an amusement park um, nothing too clever nothing heavily themed we haven't really given this ride a theme as such it's just you know the one sort of intense coaster that you'd get at these one of these sort of amusement parks um, and yeah I think it works out fine um, it does the job quite like the turquoisey light blue sort of roof colour. Um, works alright with the pink, I feel. And yeah, not really an awful lot else to to say about that. Um, this coaster does become very popular. Lots of guests seem to ride it, so that's a good sign. Um, and for the rest of the playthrough, I don't have any more money struggles at all. I did empty the park and open it back up again because I felt we're going to need that influx of guests, um, you know, paying an entrance fee to have enough money to theme up the rest of the park. I don't feel it's cheating because we've already met the goals, so I'm just going to let myself off there. But who really cares anyway? <laughs> um, then I sort of thought, we've got too much sand everywhere. Um, 
you wouldn't really build a lot of these rides on the sand. Um, you do sometimes see sort of amusement park rides being placed on the beach, usually on sort of um, structures that have been placed on there, but usually you can see the whole thing on the beach. So I'm adding some concrete in and some grass areas as well to break it all up a bit, make it look a little bit more believable. Um, and yeah, I kind of prefer how this looks. I really like the um, grass underneath the coaster elements there. I think that gives, gives a nice sort of transition sort of thing. Um, next in we work on the station for the Wild Mouse Coaster. Not really too much to say about that. Um, even more basic than the other one. I just needed to cover it up basically and make it look presentable. Uh, like you'd see in real life there wouldn't be too much theming on something like this really um, and then I cover the ground in concrete underneath the wild mouse and it starts looking a lot better then a lot more believable and then it's just a case of sort of uh, finishing some areas up for this part of the park um, which involved a lot of palm trees and a few planters and bushes and stuff but nothing too crazy I don't go heavy with any theming or make any heavily detailed buildings really or anything in this area of the park um, just keeping it very very basic and uh, I did feel that we needed something to eat uh, somewhere for guests to get food and drink and a uh, bathroom stop halfway sort of down the map here so I placed in a vending machine and a bathroom and yeah, I think uh, that covers that sort of area. Now I start working on the teacups, the cover for it. And I wanted something sort of, you know, surfy with the different wavy roof stars like we've got at the front of the park, but it didn't really work out. So I just went for this sort of um, curved roof with some glass pieces around the edge. And yes, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, it's not brilliant, but it works all right and it means at least we've got one dry ride or one sort of um, covered over ride so if it does rain the guests have got something they can ride even if it is just a teacups um, I was thinking about housing a motion simulator um, as another indoor ride but I really couldn't work out how to put it or what to do for it so in the end I think I didn't bother with that. Plus, I don't think it came up in the research either, actually. I've researched the dodgems and sort of toyed about with having them next to the Hell to Skelter, but it didn't really fit in there either, so yeah, we just didn't bother with that in the end. But like I say, we've got that one dry ride now anyway, if it does rain, so that's something. Um, I wanted to move the Ferris wheel. I felt it was blocking this sort of entrance plaza it just looked a bit crammed in there and a bit random so I moved that sort of further down the park um, and then I think I moved the health scale the health scale to down a bit as well and then we changed this front section into a seating area which I think looks much nicer there and uh, a bit more realistic so we've got some food stalls and stuff just over there so guests can sit down and have their lunch and whatnot. Then I bought, uh, built this um, fountain which I'm sorry I think a lot of the footage of that seems to be cut out of the video there which is a shame because it's one of my better fountains I'm quite proud of that one actually it looks quite nice just using the original fountain pieces but um, putting shapes around them and statues and stuff to make them a bit more interesting. I should have actually put a jet of water in the middle because nothing coming out of it but I didn't think of that uh, but never mind moving on to the final part of the park then this is our pirate themed area and um, yeah so I didn't really know where to start with this one but I know I had in my head an image of covering up the coaster track um, similar to that roller coaster at Great Yarmouth Pleasure Beach um, but rather than doing it with the classic sort of big dipper look that they've got there with a the big blue uh, structure, I thought I'd do it in a piratey theme. Um, does it look great? No, not really, but it gives the sort of idea <coughs> that they've spent a bit of budget on, um, on 
theming it up to, to a pirate sort of area. Um, it's, it's probably way more themed than what you'd see in one of these parks. Like this area was built by Disney and the other area was <laughs> Six Flags or something. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a contrast, but I wanted to add some variation and have a different themed area here. Um, and I felt like the pirate theme works quite nice in a beachfront setting, so we just went for it in the end. And I started redoing this building, and this is when I actually started to quite like this uh, themed area. Um, once we got some ideas in here, how to make this building look, uh, I'm using a lot of adventure pieces and just some borders and windows and then some jutty out windows and stuff to give it a bit of a more old fashioned feel um, and then I weren't too keen on the bits sticking out of the front so I got rid of those and <clears throat> we just put some pavilions over the top instead and some roofs and I think that works out a bit nicer um, sometimes I find it difficult to sort of show the uh, give the effect that this is uh, you know that it's pirate theming rather than medieval or whatever so um, to resolve that I just stuck a skull in there <laughs> and um, we do add some more piratey stuff to it in a bit to theme it up a bit better but yeah I think it gives a good enough impression of what it's supposed to be and obviously this houses some uh, some food stools and drink stools and whatnot as well so keeping that guest satisfaction up literally since I completed the goals the guest satisfaction has been nearly 100% the whole time uh, I do tend to find that, that it's difficult to meet the goals but then afterwards um, yeah the, the the actual gameplay is then a lot easier when you're just sort of doing the theming and stuff so here moving on to second building um, just wanted something a little bit different Obviously this covers up some of the backstage stuff as well, which I felt was important. Um, I thought I'd put a yellow window in there just to give the effect that they've got the lights on. Uh, tried that with all of them, didn't like it. So changed them back to dark ones and then just varied it a bit on the other building as well. So yeah, it's always good to like vary your pieces and colours and stuff like that around a bit just so that everything doesn't look too samey. Um, yeah, we're building a, a tower, like a pirate lookout tower or something like that. Um, and I stick a pirate flag on top of it as well, classic like Jolly Roger, um, skull and crossbones type thing. And I think that alone really shows you what the theme is, because um, obviously we don't have a pirate set in the generic in the vanilla game so yeah building stuff that just gives that impression and, you know you making structures that look like they could be a pirate theme I think works out fine obviously it helps up with the, the pirate ship right there as well and really there's not a lot more left to do on this building I'm just covering up some of the not quite so good areas of the coast. You'll notice that I've left quite a lot of gaps um, in the structure uh, around the coaster and that's so that you can see through the structure that's sort of done on purpose. Some of them I cover up with trellises and fences and stuff but it's all to look like it's a bit sort of shanty town, a bit you know like joined together um, and sort of to give the image of like ropes and stuff like that. And yeah, I didn't really add much theme into the pirate ship, just um, a few little things in the queue line there because it's already a pretty themed ride, isn't it? It already fits in well with that theming. So um, yeah, I, I have to, um, I do have to still have to work on the coaster station, um, which you'll see in just a sec. Um, I think I'm just making sure I cover up any of those sort of areas that you can see through because um, you don't want to see the whole structure but obviously I have to leave some bits free for where the coaster goes in and out of it 
uh, so there's some more open bits and some more covered up bits. Remember the second drop on the roller coaster at Great Yarmouth is actually really cool. It's probably better than the first drop because it goes under a structure with a load of support and you get some real like head chopper moments there. I don't want to give that impression with some of the drops in this one as well. Um, just using the, uh, a little adventure detail piece there for some windows on them towers. I think that looks kind of cool. Works really well, really easy to do as well. And then you can see that we have a coaster station magically appear. I must have pressed pause and stopped recording for some reason or other. Um, but it's nothing special. It's really, really um, generic and sort of quickly put together. And then I use some wooden flooring to uh, as the roof for this section because uh, I wanted this sort of all indoors. There would be probably a transfer track in there as well. Um, I haven't made one, but you can just sort of use your imagination because it's all covered up anyway. And yeah, that's 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 pretty much it. Um, the coast station's complete. Now we just sort of add some lighting and some final touches. And I was surprised actually how quickly all this came together. Um, once the goals are completed, it only took me a couple of sessions to to get all the rest of the theming done. And I surprisingly quite enjoyed doing the theming for this map. I did not enjoy trying to meet the goals at all. It took me ages to actually get into this one. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed playing through in the end. And you have no idea how happy I am that that this and the harbour one are now done. Um, Happy Co Harbour wasn't dreading as much but I was really dreading playing this map. So yeah I'm happy that it's done and we've got a nice end result. And um, What we'll do now then jump over to the final live tour and have a look at how the complete park looks. So I'll see you over there. Okay everyone, welcome to Biscayne Beach, the completed map, the completed park. Um, where do we start then? At the entrance, I guess. Um, I've not done anything to the entrance building. Half of it's off the map, and I think it looks quite nice anyway. I think that's uh, absolutely fine the way it is, and it fits the theme fine. Um, as we come in, then we've got this entrance plaza with our carousel. I did have a quick look at... Uh, trying to give it a cover but it just looks stupid because I'm no good at doing covers so I just left it um, we've got this building that I particularly like um, I think this is very believable for a beachfront setting um, like they've given it minimal theming but you know it looks nice enough um, and then there's these uh, food stools as well that just fit in quite nicely um, I've not heavily detailed anything really, I've just kept it really simple, really basic. Got a nice little seating area here. Um, and then a couple more flat rides here, the Ferris wheel and the Helter Skelter, or the Spiral Slide, as it's probably called in the game. Um, and we've got this third and final sort of um, entrance building here. And our teacups. Moving along then, we've got the top spin which um, I'm really happy with the colour scheme for that, I think it looks really cool um, and I think all the colours here work quite nicely together as a tropical sort of um, vibe I guess so yeah I'm, I'm happy with, with how all that looks um, let's start with our wild mouse then um, get the one going up the lift hill, yeah there we go I'll show you the stats after in just a sec so it's a pretty standard wild mouse layout with those you know horrible straight and curved sections and brakes so that you don't break your neck going down um, never really met anyone that likes these coasters but i guess they are cheap for lower budget parks to make um, lower budget parks and disney's california adventure <laughs> i guess uh, but yeah, pretty standard layout with a few drops and a few more turns um, into the station. Operations on it work absolutely fine, never stops on a block break. Um, I'm going to have to just watch this one go round now just to make sure that, yeah, I haven't lied about that. 
that's fine. Um, got the twister now over here behind the wild mouse, uh, just where I could get room for it really. And that brings us on to our uh, steel coaster. And, oh, sorry, I said I'd show you the stats of the wild mouse, didn't I? This video is all over the shop. Um, so we've got high excitement, a uh, very high excitement of 65 but one surprisingly a high intensity of 74.3 for this um, it might be the sort of latter section of the ride where there's some tight turns like that one going at speed probably wouldn't be very realistic but whatever um, steel coaster stats then 62.3 very high excitement 64.3 high intensity which is all we really needed um, in terms of meeting the goals I think we'll watch it from this angle so that we can see how it sort of traverses the park and whatnot. So very standard then launch into a large uh, loop into a cobra roll and straight back into another loop giving you sort of the same feelings that the smiler probably would <laughs> into a zero G roll into the brake run. Um, I'll say the smiler but any other sort of Gershlau with loads of inversions all in one go that makes you feel rather dizzy um, <clears throat> like I said before I was hoping to build like a Gershlau coaster or something um, instead of a steel coaster but I'm happy with how this looks in the end anyway so yeah it's fine so let's take a look at the pirate area then I think we'll do the coaster last so we've got um, a nice little facade of pirate buildings here which I think yeah has some nice vibes um, and the pirate ship the backdrop everything's just sort of covered up very basically I probably should have polished that off a little bit better in the corner there won't forgive myself if I don't do it now there we go that looks better um, but again I didn't spend too much time on it didn't go heavily detailed for this um, just kept things really simple and I think it does the job I think it gives a nice little pirate area again probably higher budget than a park like this would actually have for theming but it's fine so here's the stats for our wooden coaster then 61.3 very high excitement 32.8 medium intensity pretty standard and the coaster is about to go so let's watch it Oh, oh, oh dear. <laughs> okay, so all the guests are dead because they've clipped their heads through the roof. So I'm going to go back and fix that in a sec. Um, that's really bad, isn't it? Um, and I was worried it was going to stop on the lift hill then, but it didn't. So it goes into first drop. You don't get really steep drops on the wooden coast in this game. Um, so we just went with the steepest one that it does ever so slightly banked curves then into the second drop again this is just like that roller coaster at Yarmouth Pleasure Beach I was on about um, and then into another slightly helixed curve or slightly banked curve rather into more drops and yeah it really is just <coughs> some back woody that I've covered up um, and it's quite a short layout as well but I feel it like it looks longer than it is off ride and I feel that it works perfectly for this park as well uh, yeah you've everyone that's played this has built a wooden coaster to start with and you can see why really it's perfect for this sort of park so there we'll just fix all this mess here I don't know how I didn't notice that when I was playing through maybe I sort of rushed it because I just wanted to finish this one but like I say I really enjoyed um, playing it in the end uh, once I was doing all the theming and stuff just not so much fun trying to meet the goals for this one I felt but yeah Biscayne Beach is done um, and I think all that leaves for us to do is to save but I don't want to save when it's raining um, and I want to save there just because I, I don't know I just like the thumbnail to be sort of in the right place I'm a bit fussy like that 
you don't understand how satisfying it is for me to see gold coins on both of these. <laughs> That's probably not a map that I'll ever play again. Um, although, you know, it's unlikely that I'll play any of these again anyway. But So we've got a choice really of Highway Hijinks or Honey Hills next. And I'm swaying towards Honey Hills because I quite like that one and I know it's really easy as well so <laughs> it'd be nice to have an easy map next after some more challenging ones but yeah we'll see um, see how it goes so I'll see you all in the next video thank you very much for watching bye then